have enough salary, we are low paid, and we don't have enough manpower to do get, doing our jobs. And some of the media workers don't even, they are, they, are, they are receiving daily pay. If you go to work, you get the money. If you didn't go to work, you didn't get the money. And some of the media workers, they, they don't even have EPF and so so. Does this right? I don't think so. And I think we must do something. And if you are facing something that, like me, I think you have to, you have to voice out. Actually, I'm not longer working in Pernambu anymore. So whatever they will change is not gonna benefit to me. Even though they want to add on for the salary or anything, it was not gonna benefit on me. But actually, I do hope that this is a chance for us, for our younger generation that's coming who will want to work in media, they will not need to go out anymore, they will not need to leave this industry anymore just because we don't have enough pay. I have a story about my, my friend. He said like he is working in media industry for six years and his pay is only like 3,000 something. And he has to leave the industry because he wants to marry. He hope he can have a kid. Then he, he has to leave this industry. Do we want this to happen always until the future? Are you working currently? Uh, um, no. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have a series of recommendations that have come up. Of course, first and foremost, uh, the the minister should initiate an investigation uh, in, with regards to the allegations raised by Sydney herself. There is a number of things that uh, Sydney has raised, and I think the investigation is critical. But the results of investigation should also be made public order for transparency right and it can and it should be done without delay how long do we have to wait because it's not just justice for sydney it's justice for the entire media industry right second thing that is really critical i think it's timely that the minister and the ministry review and upscale the employment benefits for the media industry and this is across board right uh, especially with regards to state agents uh, state media agencies that are using public funds there has to be a review and the review must include multi-stakeholders so that it's again independent, transparently done and done by people with the right expertise. Right? And I, I would have to insist with no delay. It has to happen. Now, one of the concerns that we've seen uh, with regard to Sydney's case and perhaps also other news staff is the way we approach vernacular media or multilingual media. It's critical that they are always well resourced and well staffed because this is a poor society yeah we have diverse multilingual consumers and they need to be informed across board with different analysis you cannot just rely on one media to provide the narrative and perhaps translate that information yeah that's not what us as consumers or what is the role uh, expected of media and we want to also raise that Finally, these kinds of issues yeah, could be easily resolved if there is clear redress mechanism. Now, obviously, we've not had access or opportunity to access these mechanisms. And that's one of the reasons why we, we really must uh, unpack, I would say, or dismantle re repressive or unaccessible or inaccessible structures that are available and move towards establishing the media council. Because Media Council will not just establish the standards, but also provide the mechanisms for redress. And that would you know, give all people, including media, the assurance that your rights are going to be protected. And it will also give public the assurance that you have a mechanism to go to if you're dissatisfied with the media. Right? It will reduce the harm that there's a lot of speculation, you know, disparaging comments being made because there is a space for the dialogue, for resolution and redress. So these are our, our four main recommendations.